Hey there, this is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. In this video, I'm gonna reproduce the song Rumble by Fred again and Skrillex and share some music production tips along the way. Be sure to watch the whole video because I have a really special gift that I'm excited to share with you. So let me show you the finished product and I'll walk you through every step of the process. All right, so let's focus on the drums. Now the pattern is pretty straightforward, but I wanna focus your attention on a couple cool tricks that can really bring life to your drums. So here's the pattern. Now I wanna focus your attention on this rim roll or the snare roll right here, this section here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw these notes by hand. Let's do it from scratch, just like that. And what you'll notice is you're gonna get a pretty much same consistent level of audio for that snare roll uh, all the way through. Now, when you just draw them in like that, it feels abrupt. So what we wanna do is adjust the velocity to get this crescendo, this gradual build of volume. So in order to do that, while I'm in Pencil Tool here in Ableton Live, I can simply hold the Option key, click and draw a diagonal line or just draw a line and that'll create a uh, consistent line. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I'll click the, the, the low one here, and then I'll hold the option key and draw that line. So there you go. So it'll do this nice crescendo, this nice build with the velocity. And now look at the difference. And that's, that, that's, that's a big change there. So what we also need to make sure is that that sample that we're using has the volume to velocity setting set correctly. Now by default, it'll be set at zero. What that means is when the velocity or volume to velocity is set at zero, no matter what adjustments you make to your velocity, it won't have an impact on the volume. So the higher the number, the more impact your velocity changes will have on the volume of that sound. So when you're trying to get more of a realistic uh, you know, response from your MIDI programming, you definitely want to make sure you're changing the velocity parameter to, the, to where you like it. So here I'm gonna set it around to 80, and that's gonna give me what I, I'm looking for here. Also, we have this hi-hat uh, pattern, and then we also have a tambourine pattern, just playing the same thing. But the tambourines then become um, present only towards the end of the bar. So what I'm doing is, I'm actually going over here to the tambourine sample, and right in the volume section, I'm actually gonna right click and hit show modulation. And this is gonna give me the ability to just kind of somewhat automate the volume, right? I'm modulating the volume here. So we're gonna have the tambourines kind of sneak in towards the end of that bar. So once you view the modulation, you simply click at a point and just draw to your desired uh, amount. So that those things are really cool to do, um, and that I've noticed in recreating this track, that I was like, man, this is really neat. This is this this adds a little nuance. It adds a little bit more dynamics to that as well. So right on the uh, the drum rack that I have here in Ableton Live, I've got the Drum Bus plugin directly on there, and so I'm giving a little bit of drive, a little bit of crunch. But the main thing that's really kind of giving the snappiness to the drums is the transient designer. So I'll turn this off. So the transients, we're reducing the sustain, so it's really going to make it snappy, other than just like giving it more sustain, and you'll probably hear a lot more of the hi-hat coming through. So we're getting a lot more of the tail from the drums. Let's just shorten that up. And that's what we want. Next, let's head over to the machine gun, rumble bass, whatever you want to call it. But man, what a, what a great, cool vibe that it gives to the overall track. I mean, especially when you hear this in a big club system, you got this pulsating 16th note, low end bass thing that is just undeniable, just getting you ready to just bounce all over the place, right? So um, for this, I just thought what came to my mind was, sounds like a kick drum, just being played at a 16th note interval. And that's what I did. So a couple things here. With the kick drum, 
I have a separate uh, track just playing this kick drum here. I've got a filter that comes with the Ableton Live Simpler. So every time you load a sampler and you want to re-trigger it in the Simpler, that's that's what's loading here. Um, I'm going to just bring the cutoff filter down so we don't have a lot of the high-end knock. You know, it's it's that sounds more like a woodpecker at the front door. So I, I want want to muffle that down. Add a little bit of drive, and then you're just shaping the overall body of this sample. So uh, whichever kick drum you plan to use, you can go ahead and tweak the sustain knob because a little bit too much sustain, you're getting a lot of that lower end. So you can control that by bringing the sustain down a little bit. Then. I'm going to duplicate this track, meaning I'm going to copy exactly the same uh, kick sample. And I'm going to have it right here. And what we're going to do with this track is I'm going to let the cutoff breathe a little bit, but I'm going to use an EQ to add a little bit of like high mid-range percussion. And then I'm just going to filter that in. So we, similar to what we did with the tambourine, we're kind of doing that with this kick drum. So what I'm doing here is with this EQ, I'm going to right click show automation. And on the second kick drum track, we just pick our point here, maybe around 500, and then just automate that down. Now, what's the purpose? Why did I do this? Well, I'm doing this because when you start to layer this with the drums, uh, this adds this extra dynamic uh, layer to that kick rumble. And it just feels like it's cascading down as we're filtering, as we're moving that EQ frequency, it feels like the, the, the sound is just cascading down. All right, now let's create that accent growly bass we can hear on the downbeat of every turnaround. Uh, for this, I'm gonna use Ableton Live's operator. Now, if you're following along using Logic, Studio One, or any other DAW, um, any synth that allows you to kind of use FM synthesis, frequency modulating, uh, you can probably get the same exact result. It's not too complicated. I'm only gonna be using two oscillators. So we're gonna have oscillator A and oscillator B, right? So I'll turn these two off. And what I'm gonna do is for the first oscillator, let's start with a, a sine wave. And then the second one, I'll go ahead and choose a triangle. Now we're not really hearing anything much, so I'm gonna raise the level here of the second oscillator. All right, because then this oscillator is modulating oscillator A. So then what I'm going to do is get to the envelope. I want to shape the way that it is modulating the other oscillator. So here, let's just raise the attack, maybe somewhere around here, a little drastic. And now I'm going to lower the cutoff a little bit. And let's add some filter drive. So I'll just put the OSR and crank this up a little bit. Maybe too much, open this up. Yeah, that sounds cool. And we're gonna head over to the audio effects folder and we're gonna head over to drive and color and look for our saturator plugin. Any saturator plugin that you might have in your DAW will work fine. Let's hit soft clip. And what we wanna do is just give this extra drive and harmonics. Cool, now the goal is manipulating the envelope of that second oscillator, the triangle one. That's what's giving it that nice growl. Now for the cool bell droney type of sound that we can hear uh, on beat three of every bar, I'm actually going to be using my very own exclusive virtual instrument plugin, Orbit. This is the first Beat Academy exclusive plugin that I'm really excited to showcase and tell you about. Now, this plugin uh, was created, every sound has been created from scratch by myself. I sound designed this, and I simply just wanted a plugin that I would be using on my projects to create this nice atmospheric ethereal type vibes, um, especially with pads and drone sounds and things like that. So it's very much inspired by Brian Eno and the movie Interstellar, to be honest. So it, there is a central theme to all the patches, but essentially it's really easy, very simple to use. You have Planet A, which is your first sound module, and then you have Planet B, which is your second sound module. Uh, your amp envelope here, a chorus, a reverb, and a filter, um, and that's it. Pretty straightforward. 
And so as you browse through the different patches, you can manipulate and blend the balance of both planets and see and, and get the kind of blend of the sound that you're looking for. So for instance, I'll bring this up here. We'll bring a little bit of planet B and let me just I'm going to go ahead and lower planet B and that'll just give me the the drone sound that I'm looking for. There you go. Now I'm super excited about this plugin and as my gift to you for watching this video, I would love to give you this plugin absolutely free. So if you'd love to download Orbit and start using it right away in your DAW, it's VST3 and audio unit compatible. So that means you can use it in Logic or anything that can host VST3. This is absolutely yours for free. So be sure to click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com slash Orbit to go ahead and download and start using this plugin right away. Now, as Beat Academy member, you always have access and first access to any exclusive plugins that we'll be creating from uh, from now on. So uh, be sure you're you're getting on the mailing list as well. So let's go ahead and move on to our next sound. All right. So for the really cool pitchy type of uh, the pitch bend synth we hear layered with the bass, uh, I'm going to use Operator again. And for this, just a two. Uh, oscillators, once again, I'm going to have a sawtooth on oscillator A or oscillator 1, so saw here. And then I'm also going to use the, for the second oscillator, we're going to have a square wave. And we're simply just using one, the square wave to modulate the sawtooth. Here's just the sawtooth alone, right? But the moment we start increasing the, vo the volume of oscillator B, it starts to modulate oscillator A. And you get that nice distorted warp type of sawtooth that we that we're looking for, and I made sure to increase the course so that uh, the square wave is a whole octave higher. I'm also transposing it an octave higher, and I'm reducing the cutoff frequency because it's a bit brittle without it. So just bringing that here, and the time on the operator, it's I think it's you know it's really unique to this specific synth. But this basically allows me to add a bit more sustain. So I'm just giving a little bit more uh, the time knob here and sustain and just shaping up the tone a little bit. And that's it. Oh, and also adding spread so that we're getting a nice little wide uh, signal here. Right. Now I'm going to create some space with reverb directly on the operator. And then I'm going to use the chorus. Now, what's what's cool about having the chorus, even though I did add some spread to the operator, the chorus is going to help kind of smooth any rough edges of the sound. So a little harsh here and there. And chorus is a great plugin to kind of smooth things over. Now, I'm also going to use this EQ here to kind of just, as I was going back and forth with the references, I'm listening to uh, the Fred again track. I was just listening to that pitch down thing. I was like, man, it just, it sounds a bit thinner, right? So thinner, what, what, how can I get thin? How can I get the sound to be thinner? Well, an EQ and just start carving out some of the frequencies and boosting some of the ones that, that you want to spotlight. And then using an auto pan here, and the reason for that is when you listen to the reference track, as you, if you go throughout all of the song, especially with the vocal sample, he hear the rumble, and it's got like this tremolo effect to it. Well, you can either use a tremolo or an auto pan, something that allows that 16th note pulsing to happen. Could be, you know, um, some type of side chaining, whatever it is you want to do. I'm using the auto pan plugin here, set the phase to zero so it actually treats it as just a volume difference as opposed to panning it left and right. Now, why add this auto pan when I'm already creating a 16th note pattern? Well, this is going to smooth out the attack of that as well. And that was my thinking behind adding this plugin, not just simply adding it, just to add it. There's a reason behind it. I want the initial attack to smooth out a little bit. So that's the whole purpose behind having this. 
Let's go ahead and check out what it sounds like with everything else. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Hey, I hope it inspired you and encouraged you to use some of the tips I shared here into your own workflow when working on your own music. And as I said, as a gift for you for watching this video, I'd love to send you Orbit, my first VST instrument, exclusive Beat Academy instrument, absolutely free. You can download and access this plugin by clicking the link below in the description box or by visiting beatacademy.com slash Orbit. I had a lot of fun creating the sounds for this. And so I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of fun using it in your projects. Let me just give you a little test drive. I wanna kind of show you some of the patches and yeah, and I'm excited for you to check it out. So here's the first patch, Horizon. And check out Distance. Little bit of chorus here. Let's bring up A a little bit and uh, bring B down and open this up in some more space. And uh, let's check out Orion. So those are just a few of the sounds that are featured in Orbit. Really excited for you to check it out. So once again, click the link below, visit beatacademy.com slash Orbit to get your plugin today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.